On today's video, the Chiefs signed yet another wide receiver to a futures contract. Arizona is possibly looking to trade D-Hop. Is KC a perfect trade partner? We're talking the NFL coaching carousel and giving our predictions for Bengals versus Ravens. Stick around. So right on the heels of signing John Ross yesterday, the Kansas City Chiefs go and sign another wide receiver prospect, Ty Freifogel. He played college at Indiana University, and he was their top wide receiver of all time, to my knowledge. Mike, what do you got for stats on him, and what do you know about him? Yeah, so not to be confused with Fogel from Superbad, Ty Freifogel, man, he went to college up the road, right from us, Indiana University. He was a Hoosier. He's 6'1", 206. Um, he had 158 receptions in his career for about 2,200 yards, 14 TDs. He's a big kid. He's he's elusively quick, and he's got pretty good hands. Not too bad. He did have some injury concerns. I think he redshirted his his first senior year, and he come back for a fifth year. Um, but other than that, I think this is just a signing. Again, this is just Veach adding more pieces that possibly could pay off. Just like John Ross yesterday, we know he has problems catching the ball and he's got injury problems, but this is the time of the year to bring in these new guys and just try to add more pieces if you can. Right, and he's kind of the other end of the aspect from John Ross. John Ross is just a freak of nature, super fast, athletic. Uh, Freifold was more of a physical receiver that can you know make contested catches and things like that, and he's a big guy. Speaking of people like that, DeAndre Hopkins is said to be on the trade block from Arizona, and we got a lot of Chiefs Kingdom out there going crazy about it, dude, with good reason. I mean, D-Hop is an absolute monster. We didn't hear a whole lot from him this year. He's still had a huge year. Um, I had him on my fantasy team, and he helped me out quite a bit until the last week or two. But, yeah, I mean, this guy can play, man. And could you imagine that with Patrick Mahomes? But what do you know about them wanting to trade him, and what do you know about what kind of contract he's in, and what would we have to give up for someone like that? Right. That's a lot of questions to answer. Uh, we don't even know if they're going to be able to find somebody to trade for him. I would think so. He is getting a little older. He's 30. He'll be 31 this year. Uh, we've proven that we can win with younger guys. Um, we may need to sign back Juju. I like Juju. I don't think I would want to get rid of Juju yeah. for D-Hop. Um, I mean, that might be controversial to some and say D-Hop's a bigger um, long play threat, a better, a better receiver all around than Juju, but I, I like what Juju's brought to us this Juju's year. Juju's a better deserves. team fit. Juju's a right. better team fit, and that goes a long way in the locker room and even on the field because D-Hop, he's known to be a little bit of a prima donna, and he wants his way, and he wants the ball all the time, much like Tyree Kill when he was here, and we saw how that ended. So, hey, count your lucky stars for Juju because he's a team player. The guys love him, and he's an excellent player. So I'm with you. Definitely want to see him resign. What do you think we'd have to give up for somebody like D-Hop, though? I mean, in a trade, would they want a bunch of draft picks? Uh, are they looking at a first rounder even? Like, what would they want for him? I don't see how they could ask for a first rounder for D Hop with his age being that much. Um, he's also still on a two year, thirty four point three six million left on his contract, so he'd probably want something new added onto that, which is probably more favorable. Unless you could get Arizona to eat that deal, um, that would be worth trading. But I would say somebody could probably snag D Hop for a late second through a fifth rounder. I've seen stupider trades. Let's be honest. I've seen people give up fifth round picks for uh, pro bowlers. So you never know. It just depends on, it doesn't look like he wants to be there with Kyler Murray anymore. And now that they fired Cliff Kingsbury, uh, he just wants out. Right. Well, speaking of Cliff Kingsbury getting fired, we're going to talk about the coaching carousel going on here. Uh, Lovey Smith also got fired from Houston. I was completely wrong about that. I even convinced you and Kyler that they might keep him. If you remember, but he, they fired him first chance they got. He was the first one out the door, which I find a little bit crazy, but whatever. Um, but yeah, Cliff Kingsbury fired. We got some rumors going on about Eric Bieniemy finally getting his head coach job or maybe another offensive coordinator spot. Um, I think it was the Washington Commanders that he's yes. rumored to maybe have some talks with. And then we had Jim Harbaugh, who had a virtual interview with the Broncos today. So that affects us directly. I know the Broncos have been in shambles. And, of course, they fired Hackett before the season was even over. And a lot of people thought Harbaugh would be a good fit for them. So, Mike, what do you think about all these moves going on? I know there's lots of rumors floating around already. I mean, we haven't even started the playoffs here, and people are already talking about next year. So uh, what have you heard, and what do you think? is legit and what's not yeah so first off i just want to say how nice it is to have some stability here with andy reed and brett veach um we used to go through this coaching carousel quite often you know it wasn't even no more than a decade ago when we were going through the the bad years man and they brought out the bags and the uh the flyovers and everything else it was a it was a rough time um but yeah let's start with harbaugh he says that he is committed to Michigan, but he did do that virtual interview today. 
Jim Harbaugh coming to the Denver Broncos does not really scare me much. I don't think he's equipped to be a great head coach. Um, that's just me. I think Michigan, like, he's not doing a great job with Michigan either. Let's be honest. Um, they got beat by yeah. TCU, who got blown off some the field. Would, yeah. Some people would fight you about that one, but I'm with you, man. Yeah, he was actually the head coach with the San Francisco 49ers for a while. That didn't pan out. He ended up at Michigan. Uh, like you said, uh, a lot of people thought Michigan had a great year, and obviously they had a good year if they're in the Final Four. But I mean, they weren't going to win. Let's just get that straight. I don't know why they keep putting these teams that are not SEC teams in the Final Four because it's unfair and it's just embarrassing to those guys. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Not a big deal for me if he goes to Denver. Uh, I think he coaches a lot like his brother. Uh, John Harbaugh, who I'm not a big fan of in Baltimore, to be honest. I mean, he always has a good, hard-nosed team, and they're scrappy, and they're going to compete. But, I mean, I don't like the offenses he runs, and I just feel like it's very uh, high school-esque offenses that he runs. And Lamar, I think, could even benefit from not being with John Harbaugh. So if Jim's a, he's probably a little more liberal, like as far as play calling and things like that. He likes to do the more West Coast stuff. But there's a lot of similarities there. Yeah, he just doesn't scare me as the head coach. Um, Sean Payton, I think Sean Payton could do some work over there, either in you know Las Vegas or in yeah. Denver, either one. So, I mean, but we'll move on. Lovey Smith, I don't know why they fired him. I actually thought he deserved to be there. Um, the Colts are actually thinking about rehiring Jeff Saturday, even though he just went 1-7 and seven as an interim. Cliff Kingsbury, that's yeah, the other that's one. That's what yeah. I'd like to bring up. I've seen a lot of rumors about that, about him maybe landing in Kansas City in some form. Um, to me, I think the only way you're going to see Cliff Kingsbury in Kansas City is if he wants to take a step back from a head coaching position to a quarterback coach. If Eric Bieniemy were to take a job somewhere else and go on, I feel like we would put Matt Nagy back at the offensive coordinator, and then I think that opens up that quarterback coach. And obviously Kingsbury and Mahomes have a lot of rapport because of Texas Tech, so... Uh, that's a possibility, in my opinion. Otherwise, no. That would mean Eric B. Enemy. Like, there's some talk with Eric B. Enemy. There was some news out on Twitter today from Benjamin Albright. He tweets and says, I heard a rumor about B. Enemy after this season. We shall see. He was referencing to the offensive coordinator being fired with the commanders. So, would B. Enemy be willing to go there? Maybe. You know, he's still on a one year deal here. It's not guaranteed he'll be back. Maybe he wants to get out from under Andy and everybody and show that he can do it. He can call the majority of the plays. Uh, we'll see. I, I don't really have a preference either way. I think Kansas City will be fine no matter what you do. Um, I don't know if Cliff Kingsbury is the answer at the QB coach, but he does have a history of Patrick Mahomes, obviously. Um, but yeah, we'll see. This is all just speculation at this point. Right. Well, Eric B. Enemy, I think it would benefit him, honestly, to take a job somewhere else because he's been trying to get this head coaching position for the last few years. He's been passed over over and over again there's all kinds of reasons why or people speculating and everything but honestly i think it is that stigma that you know he gets carried by andy reed and patrick mahomes and they're kind of worried what he would do on his own so i think it would benefit him to go take another job and see if he can be successful there and then he could go ahead and land that head coaching job he's been trying to get so behind the scenes me and mike have been working really hard on our store and we will drop the link for that on friday it's opening friday the 13th we got all kinds of good designs on there hoodies t-shirts hats beanies cups everything you can think of you're gonna have a really good selection starting out like i said we worked really hard on it so make sure friday you're looking for that link and if you use the promo code ACU15, you'll get 15% off your order. So make sure you get over there and do that. If you get in our community section, look at some of our posts, you can get a little look at some of the merch. Yeah, so you guys asked for it. We delivered. It's going to be here on Friday. We use the top quality everything, the best quality T-shirts, best quality tumblers, you name it. It's all high quality. So we hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and move on to some more playoff talk. Yesterday, we covered the Bills-Miami game. We said that the Bills should win that one. Uh, we we're a little disgruntled in picking that. We wanted to see uh, a Chiefs-Dolphins matchup, but we do think the Bills pull it out. Today, we're going to yeah. focus on Bengals versus Ravens. Steve, what do you think about that game, and where do you think it's it's heading to right now? Well, it's a divisional matchup. The teams don't like each other. Uh, the one thing that's in favor for Baltimore is that they literally played last week. Cincinnati pretty much had that game in hand the whole time. It was a little closer than the score looked, but I don't think they were uncomfortable. But beating a team back-to-back -back weeks, it's difficult. And like I said earlier, when we were talking about John Harbaugh, he always has a tough team that's scrappy, and they're going to compete one way or another. Uh, we don't know if Lamar is going to be back. I kind of doubt it. Huntley's out. They're using a third-string quarterback. 
they just don't have much firepower on the offensive side of the ball. They've, they've struggled with not having receivers all year anyway. They went out and got Sammy Watkins again, who had a huge fumble in that game, but he, he was playing well up until then. Uh, it's kind of very reminiscent of the play with Travis Kelsey where they just held him up and they weren't blowing the play dead and they ripped the ball out, which is what the Bengals did to Kelsey, uh, kind of what they did there. Uh, I think if anything benefits them, it's just the fact that they played them last week and it's hard to beat a team twice in a row. Uh, but I think the Bengals pretty much – I think we're going to see Bills and Bengals in that next round, man. That's all there is to it. Yeah, I pretty much agree with you. I don't see any way that I think the Ravens can pull this one out. Now, their defense is better than they looked earlier in the season, but Joe Burrow is – he's just too much. He's made his offensive line look better. He makes all of his receivers – I mean, he's got good receivers, but he makes them look better than they are half the time. Um yeah, I just think Burrow's going to be too much. It's still going to be in Cincinnati. It didn't get moved from Paycor. So it's a home game. Again, we don't know if Lamar's going to be back. Even if he is, how healthy is he going to be? So right. I just don't see it happening. I'm going to go ahead and say the Bengals win this one, and I say they probably win it, I don't know, like 34-24. I'll say at least 10 points. I think them and the Bills will take care of business, and they'll move on. Uh, those two and the Chiefs are the class of the AFC. It's that simple. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if Baltimore has any hope of upsetting the Bengals in this game, they're going to have to hope for a ball control, run heavy offense and keep Joe off the field. That way they don't have to worry about getting blown off the field. But I mean, they have Dobbs who it's coming off of injuries. So who, who knows how healthy he actually is. And then they have Kenyon Drake. That's their one-two punch there. And I mean, if the Bengals defense doesn't have to focus on passing game because they're using a third string quarterback and they have no real receiver threats out there. I mean, you're looking at like I think his top receivers are like Sammy Watkins and Isaiah Likely, the rookie tight end. So, I mean, there's just not a whole lot going on there, man. And I think uh, the chances of them beating them are slim because, like I said, they'd have to have a good running game established, but that defense doesn't have to focus on a passing game. So they can they can lock in on those two and really shut it down. I think that's really all they have to do to beat them. Yeah, I don't think there's any way to beat the Bengals the way it sits. If they did upset them, it's going to take – a lot of ground and pound, and it's going to take the Bengals' offense to just not be clicking that day. I think, yeah, just have a bad day. Yeah. yeah, the Bengals would have to have a bad day, and I think the Bengals can only beat themselves. Yeah, so we get a little bit of a slow period here during the bye week and everything. So everybody's been looking at futures, contracts, and things like that. Obviously, we talked about them signing Ty Freifogel today. They signed John Ross yesterday, which we talked about more in this video right here. Make sure to get in the comments and talk about that with us. Watch it. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. And we'll be back tomorrow with more on your Kansas City Chiefs. Store drops Friday. I, 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 I,